is cancer. Those words have haunted me since I was a child, as my family members and friends and loved ones pass away from the disease. An aunt from brain cancer, an uncle from bowel duct cancer, a roommate from lymphoma, a colleague from colorectal cancer, and the list goes on. But the sad fact is that I am not alone. Many of you in the audience have lost friends, family, and loved ones as well to this horrible disease. In fact, in India, this year alone, a million people will be diagnosed with cancer. And of those, 700,000 of them will not survive. Cancer is a horrible problem caused by two main things. Number one, we're catching cancer too late. And number two, our drugs are not good enough. However, I bring you good news from the front lines of cancer research. The tides are turning. We are starting to win the war on cancer. Currently, there's three of the most exciting revolutions that's happening in cancer research. The first is cancer genomics. The genome is a complete set of information, genetic information, encoded by DNA in an organism. And changes in this DNA, called mutations, are what drives cancer cells out of control. About 10 years ago, I was part of the team at Johns Hopkins that mapped the mutations of cancers comprehensively for the first time. And since then, there have been over 90 projects in 17 countries, including India, that are working feverishly to understand the genetic landscape of cancers. And I'm proud to say that today, tens of thousands of cancers are now understood to exquisite molecular detail. The second exciting revolution is precision medicine, also known as personalized medicine. Instead of traditional ways of treating cancer with chemotherapy in a one-size-fits-all manner, physicians are now able to use tailor-made drugs for different types of cancer based on their genetic profile. A host of these drugs called targeted therapies are now available to treat cancer patients based on their unique genetic profile. The third revolution is immunotherapy, which is using our own immune system to fight cancer. For example, scientists have been able to find the off switch of the immune system and turn the switch back on with drugs so that these cells can go and fight cancer. There are other ways where scientists have been able to take the immune cells out of your body, train them, engineer them, and then put them back into the body to fight cancer. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? It's pretty amazing. While these three revolutions are happening, there are still many challenges. Let me illustrate with a patient. And for those who are queasy, you might want to close your eyes. Here is a patient with a skin cancer called melanoma. It's horrible. The disease has gone all over his body. However, scientists have been able to map the DNA of that cancer and give him a specific treatment that targets that specific mutation. The results are miraculous. The cancer seems to have melted away. It's pretty amazing. However, I've told you there's challenges. A few months later, unfortunately, this picture is taken. The cancer has come back. The question is why, and what do we do about it? The answer is tumor heterogeneity. Let me explain. In a cancer as small as a rajma here, there are over 100 million cells in just one cancer. And although most of the cells are pretty much the same, there are small differences in the cells that make them respond to drugs differently. So even if you have a drug that kills almost all of the 100 million cells, there's a possibility that there's a small population that's resistant to that drug. And these are the cells that ultimately come back. So then the question is, what do we do about it? Well, the key to this is to apply the advanced therapeutics that have been created as early as possible before these mutant cells emerge. The key to curing cancer is early detection. And intuitively, we know this. You know, catching a cancer early, they usually do better. However, the numbers show this as well. For example, in ovarian cancer, if you catch the cancer in stage four, one of the later stages, by five years, only 17 out of 100 women will survive. However, if you're able to catch this cancer in stage one, over 90% of women are able to survive, even with the same drugs. Unfortunately, for ovarian cancer, we're only catching 15% of this in stage one, whereas the vast majority of them, we're catching them in stages three and four. What we need are better detection systems. Current detection systems fall into one of three categories. One is medical procedures, such as colonoscopy for colorectal cancer, protein biomarkers, such as PSA for prostate cancer, and medical imaging, such as mammography for breast cancer. 
colonoscopy within medical procedures is sort of the gold standard. However, as you know, it is highly invasive and requires a lot of infrastructure and a big hospital to support it. And many people around the world, including India, don't have access to these hospitals. Protein markers are much cheaper and more efficient. However, they struggle from problems of a low specificity, resulting in a lot of false positives and unnecessary workups. Medical imaging is great for some populations, but you can't do it too often because you're exposing these people to too much radiation. And in some populations, it doesn't work. So for example, in women with dense breasts, mammography actually doesn't work very well. So what we need is an early detection system that is non-invasive, that is light in infrastructure, that is highly specific, that does not have much false positives, that does not have any radiation, and works in all populations. So does such a method exist? Well, I probably wouldn't have taken a plane all the way to India if it doesn't. And at Terra, we created such a technology. Let me tell you more about it. Central to our technology is the blood test. Your blood circulatory system, well, seemingly mundane, is critical to keeping all of us alive, providing oxygen and nutrients to each of our cells and taking away carbon dioxide and waste. Here's the key. Cancer cells, even when they're very, very small, when they die, they shed their DNA into the bloodstream. The key then is to figure out how can we catch this cancer DNA in the blood as early as possible. So this is how we do it. First, we take simple blood, we extract the DNA from the blood, then we use molecular biology techniques to enrich that DNA for cancer DNA that's known to cause cancer and linked to cancer based on the databases for cancer genomics. Then we sequence the DNA using DNA sequencing machines. And ultimately, from all the information, terabytes of information, we're able to use statistical and computational methods to find a small amount of information there from the cancer DNA that's in the blood. We published these results for the first time last year. I was featured on the cover of Nature. Because it's hard right now to predict who has cancer, we worked on a population right now that will come back with cancer, and this is in, in lung cancer. Well, most lung cancer patients, we can give them a lot of drugs, but most lung cancers come back. The question then is, can we catch these cancers coming back earlier than current methods? Let me show an example of one patient. So this is in terms of time on day. The person goes under surgery and under chemotherapy. Now the patient is in a state of remission. There's no cancer that's being detected. But then the doctors are surveilling these patients with imaging and clinical tests. For this particular patient, unfortunately, the cancer comes back around day 450. During this whole time, we've been collecting blood for this particular patient so that we can look at the level of cancer DNA in the blood. What does it show? Well, it starts off pretty high and then drops off with surgery and chemotherapy and remains undetectable for a couple cycles of blood. And then it starts up to rise around day 340 and then higher in subsequent blood draws. Did you catch that? At day 340, there is a rise of cancer DNA. And that is 100 days earlier than current detection methods. So we are detecting for this patient 100 days earlier for treatment, 100 days less for the cancers to grow, 100 days less for resistant cells to emerge. We're so excited by this information when we're doing additional clinical tests. We're working now doing clinical trials in breast cancer, additional to lung cancer, in ovarian cancer, bladder cancer, colorectal cancer, we're working with researchers all over the world on this, and we're pretty excited to see how much earlier we can catch these cancers in different cancer types. Ultimately, I have a dream that one day, as part of our regular physical checkup, we'll have two extra vials of blood drawn. And from that blood, we can look for the signatures of all known cancers, protecting detecting these cancers days, weeks, months, years, or even decades in advance. Even with the drugs that we have today, that means that millions of lives will be saved. And if you add on to that the advancements that's happening in therapeutics, such as targeted therapies and immune oncology, the end of cancer is in sight. So now when I hear about the word cancer, I'm actually filled with great hope. Millions of cancer researchers around the world are working tirelessly to fight against this disease. And as you've heard, we're making tremendous progress. So for those who've been affected by cancer or those who are fighting cancer right now, or those who potentially right now, you know, uh, who are cancer survivors, I want to give you a message. Good days are coming. Achei den, ane valehe.
Thank you. Thank you.